Hello. I'm Peter Green, co-founder of the Rasbian Project, and I'm going to talk about a bit of infrastructure software we wrote to serve one of our needs that may be useful to other downstreams. It's called Auto Forward Porter Git. Its job is to automate the really tedious job of keeping your slightly modified packages up to date with new stuff from Debian. So, okay, often necessary to modify packages that we get from Debian for various reasons, changing compiler flags, disabling test suites, and that sort of thing. Occasionally actual code changes, but mostly it's just changes to make files and things. Debian updates stuff quite a bit. And merging that manually it gets tedious about after about the fifth or sixth time you've updated the same package. So we're, we aim to automate this process. We can't automate every single case, but we can automate most of the routine ones. So the first generation of the Autofield Porter was written in 2015. It was based on diff and patch. Had a lot of Raspbian specific assumptions was difficult to extend it to some of the slightly more complicated cases because of the way patch kind of either succeeds or fails and when it fails you don't really have a good working point for the next bit of automation to pick up on and also patch tends to fail if if your change has been merged upstream it doesn't like that so I had some discussions with Ian Jackson, creator of DGET. And I decided to re-engineer the system around DGET. And in 2017, I decided to try and make this more useful for other people, moving the Raspbian specific stuff out of the code itself and into a config file. And now I'm hoping to convince some other people to try it out and tell me what they think of it. So, some terminology that we use. An upstream project here is a project that supplies deb deb packages that you modify. So, for us, that's Debian. For another, de for another one, it might be Ubuntu. The downstream project is the project that's distributing the packages you modify. Again, that could be anything from a handful of packages you use personally to a major derivative. And a version marker is a string within the version number, normally at the end, although not always for reasons of maintaining version ordering which is used to identify your downstream packages. So generally it starts with a plus and followed by a number. Something like plus rpi is what we use in Raspbian, plus Ubuntu is what Ubuntu uses, and so on. Now, in order to work with stuff in Git, we've got to get it into Git. We've got to get it into Git with a, with a history of a shape that makes sense for the merge. So, the first thing we do is we pull both the upstream and the downstream packages into a local repository. We use rep rep row for this, and auto forward porter Git has some code to convert it to package whitelist into a rep rep pro package whitelist so that rep rep pro can import the relevant packages. Once we've got them in that local repo, that's when a tool I wrote called pull to git takes over. I say dgit supports converting between Debian source packages and git package and git commits, 
But it can't by itself build a sane history for this task. Pool to get takes DSCs in a pool style structure, i.e. what RepRepPro has, imports them into Git repositories, building a history. We're stricter about history for downstream packages than upstream packages. For, down, for downstream packages, we insist on having the immediate parent version. Whereas for upstream packages, we'll import history if we've got it, but ultimately we'll skip versions or we'll import with an orphan history. Now, there's an option that if, if a package we need for our history is not in the pool we're importing from, we'll go and get it from snapshot.debian.org. This is quite important because when you're going to merge some, your downstream version, which is a bit out of date, with your up, new up-to-date version from Debian, you need that common ancestor version. Otherwise, the merge won't go sanely. So, and especially when you first add a package to the whitelist, you likely won't have that common ancestor version either in your pool or in your Git repositories. So, pull to Git will go and get it from snapshot.debian.org, import it and include it in the history. So now, we've got the stuff in Git. Git's a pretty good merge tool. So most of the files will usually merge okay. But there are some problem files. Debian slash changelog will always conflict. And we have a tool that handles that and basically groups all the downstream changes into a single changelog entry that's on top. You could use merge changelogs instead. That's mostly a matter of style more than anything in terms of what you want your diffs from your downstream to upstream to look like. Debian slash patches slash series, that also fails quite often. Not always, but basically, from a merging point of view, we treat that like a weekly ordered set. We'd like to preserve order, but we don't fail if we can't preserve order. I spent quite a bit of effort writing a tool for merging Debian slash control, because that was a place we were getting quite a few conflicts. Particularly things like if we were removing a feature from a package, which we sometimes had to do, we'd remove build dependencies, but then Debian goes and bumps the version in those build dependencies we removed. Merge conflict. So we automated that. And symbols files are another big one for us. You know, symbols don't come out quite the same on all architectures. And then Debian goes and rather than something say architecture not RMEL, they change it to architecture not RMEL, not risk v64 or something. Um, so, that, those fix-ups, and there's a few others I haven't mentioned, get the vast majority of merges to succeed automatically. But sometimes there are conflicts that we can't reasonably automate the solution of. Particularly conflicts in Debian slash rules tends to be a big one. We don't want to lose all the work the automation did. We want the manual work to be able to start where the automation left off. So, if the image fails, we 
do something slightly ugly. We take a list of files with conflicts in, we put it at the top of Debian slash changelog, which ensures that things can't be built from until someone, fix, until someone deletes it from Debian slash changelog, because it makes it a format violation. And then we push that to a special branch in a private Git repository. Yeah. So we add files with conflict markers in them to a Git commit, which is dirty as heck, but it works. And then someone can pick that up, fix things manually, and then do a git commit dash dash amend so no one sees the mess. Okay, so we've now got a merge that looks okay according to git. And by the way, for those who aren't familiar with dgit, dgit does patches applied git trees. So upstream changes will also have been merged by this process. But we've also got the quilt series, which needs to be consistent with the tree. As I say, it's a patches applied tree. And sometimes it's not. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is because of git merge can handle situations that patch can't. As I say, a big one is when your change has been accepted upstream. Or sometimes the patches won't apply. Sometimes they'll apply but give the wrong results. We need to fix that up. And the way we do that, again, pretty hacky. I, need, I could probably improve this, but it doesn't come up that often. Most of the time, the patches do actually apply. But we go through... We go through all the patches, we try and apply them to the upstream source. If they're fuzzy, we defuzz them. Because dpkg-source won't apply a patch with any fuzz in it, whereas Quilt will. And if we can't apply it at all, we just remove it from the patch series. And then after that, dgit generates a new patch with any remaining changes to make the git series consistent with the source tree. This talk's gone way quicker than I thought it would. So, we use dgit to actually build the source packages. Optionally, we can then go on and call sbuild to turn those source packages into, a bu into binaries. This is important for Raspbian because Raspbian doesn't have any Arch all auto builders. So, we need changes files that have at least the Arch all packages in and may as well have the Arch specific ones in. We also have the option to use dgit push so that people who import our DSCs can get real git history. Reason that's not enabled by default is that dgit push needs a server set up, which is a bit of a pain to do. We do it for Raspbian, but I can't expect people just trying out the software to have that infrastructure set up, so that option's disabled by default. Okay, now I've talked to you about it, I'm going to try and do a live demo of it. Can everyone read that? So first of all, we need something for it to work on. So I'm going to run some commands that are going to grab an old version of a package from Deb. Before we do that, let's just run the clean 
script I've got in here. The, so we're going to download an old version of a package from Debian and we're going to apply a patch to it to basically turn it into our, a surrogate for what would be an old downstream package. Okay, it's working now. The f I just had an internet connection problem. So now we've told it to get an old version. Of of the hello package from snapshot.debian.org. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Oh, there we go. It's it's got it now. So we've got our rep rep pro set up, pretty simple. This isn't a rep rep row talk, so I won't go into details about that, but it's you can see we've got something to pull our packages from our upstream distro, which for this demo is Debian said. And we've got a config file for auto forward port to get itself, which is in tilde slash dot auto forward port to get. So, mostly file paths this, so path to the working repo, path to where we want to put the get repos, path to the auto forward port, a temporary directory, path to the output directory, what our local version marker is for this test, it's plus test for Raspberry and it's plus Rpine and so on. What we call a revert marker, sometimes we modify packages and we revert those modifications. Um, Occasionally, due to versioning order, we need to forward port a reversion. I mean, I know that sounds odd, but it happens with particularly when you're doing patches to things in stable. Whether we want to invoke sbuild on our results, whether we want to invoke dgit push on our results, names and emails to use,
We've got another option to push some of our Git repos to GitHub. Again, that's disabled by default, but that's configuration for that. Whether we want pull to get, which used to be known as DSC dir to get, things got restructured slightly. Whether we want that to pull packages from snapshot.debian.org or not, you usually do. And the names of the suite. So, there's the option to have a split main and staging suite in your downstream. We're not using that for the demo, but that's why the option's called staging suite. And what our upstream suite is called in our local repo. And finally, the name of, I mentioned the working branch before where we push stuff so that we can work on failed, so we can continue where the auto forward porter failed at. Okay, so that's our config. How am I doing for time? No, time is not working. Ah, there we go, still got plenty of time. So, Where's my mouse pointer gone? So the next thing I'm going to do is that that test package we built, which represents an old downstream package. I need to import it into the repository. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. All these commands I'm pasting are coming from a tutorial file that's included with auto forward porter get. We also have a whitelist file that lists the packages we, we want auto forward porter git to work on. So that's in tilde slash dot auto forward porter git slash whitelist. Dot and then the suite name. So whitelist dot sid. And there's also whitelist.import, which is a list of stuff to import, and that's automatically updated from the other whitelists. You can see we've got one package in here at the moment, which is hello. Now we've got everything in place for the auto forward porter to run be able to actually run it. Where's my mouse? You see rep rep pro running, then pull to get running. Downloading the base version, the common ancestor version. And it's failed for some reason. It worked.
try running it again. It worked when I when I tested this earlier. Oh, I know what step I produce, I forgot. The temporary directory actually has to exist. Okay, so it succeeded this time. Okay, so we it succeeded in the actual auto forward porting, but hasn't managed to copy it to the output directory. If it works this time. So as you can see, it's pulled the sources, the changes forward from the old version of the Hello package to the latest version of the Hello package from Set. So, any questions? You're all being very quiet. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, how widespread is the use of this tool? I'm not aware of anyone else using it yet. This is partly why I've come to give a talk about it, because I want to convince other people to use it and tell me what I'm doing that's good or bad with it. It serves Raspbian's needs. As I say, I'm not aware of anyone else using it yet, which I, I quite like to change. I'm also musing whether or not I should package it in and upload it to Debian, and if so, how exactly I should structure that packaging. Should I go with doing what Git does, this idea of having a master command that then runs, runs all the different scripts of subcommands? Because at the moment, it basically just runs from a Git, from a Git checkout. So you just check it out, and you run it from there. I don't think I want to put all my commands on the path that will pollute path quite a bit. So not exactly sure what direction to go in with that. And whether it's worth, as I say, <coughs> packaging it and uploading it or not. Um, I already spoke to you yesterday about this, but uh, uh, I'm interested in this tool if it could be enhanced to also merge with upstream sources because, well, uh, Debian is an upstream, but Debian has its own upstreams, 
and uh, one of my main use case is uh, automating the update of uh, dependencies. I mean, sometimes I, I package something for Kali and it has uh, thousands of dependencies, which are easy package, but uh, the manual work to update them is tedious, just like yours. And uh, if it could uh, either use a, a, a directly the upstream Git branch to update packages or possibly download turbos and build a fake uh, upstream and use that for merging, it would be interesting. Yeah, uh, I think that could be made to work. I'd have to have possibly a bit more of a look at how dgit imports work. and. You need, the thing is, to make a merge work right, you need to get the right common ancestor. Which, for a new upstream version, is the old upstream source. Yes, um, we, we, there are quite a few tools in uh, with uh, git build package to build, uh, well, to, to yeah. create fake make m merge points between uh, what you get from a trouble and what you get from a git repository. Yeah, as I say, it would just be a matter of tweaking. I think that would be the main thing, tweaking the tooling so it gets the right common ancestor version in place so that then Git can do a sensible merge with whatever new upstream you've got. I think most of the rest of the stuff would more or less just work as long as the right common ancestor was in place. You might also need to think about what you're going to put in Debian slash changelog but again, that's as much an issue of, st of style as substance. Yeah. But that, those would be the two main issues, <coughs> change log generation and getting the right common ancestor point, I think. Other than that, I think a lot of the scripts I've written wouldn't actually be doing anything in that case because a lot of the stuff I've a lot of the scripting is about dealing with merge conflicts in the cha in the Debian tree, and if you don't have a Debian tree on one side, there's going to be no merge conflicts there. Sure. <laughs> um, and the, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, well, obviously prepare a new source package uh, for, well, in your case, a new version for your derivative. Uh, but uh, so all the time-consuming part is uh, ensuring that the uh, package works. Well, you hope it will, <laughs> but we have tools nowadays with auto package test to ensure that it at least does that to some point. And it would be interesting uh, as well to have your infrastructure run those tests and uh, uh, just to ensure it and the flag a package which uh, might have a issue, even if they build, even if they could be installed uh, di directly in the repository, maybe it's interesting to flag them saying, oh, the, the test no longer work, uh, so maybe you want to double check bec before I upload it, and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'll be brutally honest, Raspbian has run on, a, the, the way I've managed to run a full, a more or less full rebuild derivative on one person part time, is by running on the philosophy of if it compiles, ship it. <laughs> Which may or may not be the best way to run a project, but... I understand, I just wanted to share it uh, with others uh, to give ideas of for where you could go and where they could help you <laughs> to make it more usable to other persons. I mean. No. Because you, you're looking for uh, the other issue, use cases. The issue I always run into with test suites is unless you're intimately familiar with the software, it's difficult to tell what a test suite failure actually means. Does it mean that some bit of corner case functionality we don't care about is broken? Does it mean the package is totally broken? Mm. Those are generic problem. I mean, uh, <laughs> you can always keep your philosophy, but at least uh, you, you you have a supplementary data point to make your decisions. Mm. And uh, I mean, well, the tests are built by Debian. In mm. your case, the tests are written by Debian developers. So yeah. at least you don't have the work to create the test just to mm. 
run them and uh, yeah. When we run it in Raspbian, we do we do run it with the do s build option, which means that any build time tests will have been run before we upload the results. So if there's a build time test that fails, unless we've disabled said build time test, that will result in a build failure and the modified package won't ever get uploaded. Okay. Yes, but I don't have any questions anymore. So just to announce the build. Okay. Anyone else? Got five minutes left. Yeah. Uh, how usable uh, is it without uh, a separate instance of Digit? It'll all work, you just won't get nice Git histories. Is basically, basically the position. So. It'll mean that every every time you create a pack, you every time your package is updated, then de then when that goes, to, so it'll go from auto forward port to git to your your repository, whatever that is, and then it'll be re-imported by auto forward port to git to use to produce the next one. And if you don't have a dgit infrastructure, that import will be a import from DSC building, which works fine, but it just means you get a very messy git history. But the DSCs that come out will still be fine. The merge process doesn't really care what the git history looks like. So yeah, it will work fine without dgit infrastructure. You'll just get nice looking git histories if you have dgit infrastructure. Anyone else? We've got three minutes left. Okay, thank you, Peter.